Before we begin, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to help the channel grow and keep up to date with our latest videos. Hi and welcome to another video by me, Flojo. Today we are looking at Power Apps Canvas applications and we're looking at how we can patch many-to-many -many relationships. So, let's look at patching issues. Firstly, patch does not work with many-to-many -many relationships. Now, why does it not work with many-to-many -many relationships? Well, patch is designed to update a single or a list of records that's on one table. With many-to-many -many relationships, you're working with two tables establishing um, a connection between one and another, but it can also go in reverse. So you can go from table one to table two, and then table two to table one. So, sounds complicated, right? But essentially, patch will not allow you to do this because you do not have a field on your table that will allow you to simply provide a GUID and essentially do a lookup to the other table. It's not a single to many or a many to single. So essentially, you have to create a relation because there is this hidden table between many to many relationships if you're using out of the box and that's what we're going to be looking at here. So essentially you start with one table, you have another table and you have a many to many relationships between them. There is a connecting table that the relationship is stored in and we're going to be going over this momentarily but essentially patch will not allow you to do this. So you're unable to add many to many relationships but you're also unable to remove many to many relationships with patching. So how do we patch our data to do this? Well, there are two functions. There are relate and unrelate. So we have the relate function, and this is what it looks like. You would write relate, open your parentheses, you would put the initial table, then you would put the record that you're trying to relate to that table. So essentially we have table one and table two, and this is creating a relationship between both of them. But table one will be the relationship, so we'll talk about this later. Now to do an unrelate, to remove the relationship, you use unrelate, and essentially you just do exactly the same thing. You'd write unrelate, open the parentheses, put your table, then your record, and then close the parentheses. So again, it's table one and table two. So how does this work? We were talking about how two tables are connected by this third table that's hidden. So let's take a look at that. Essentially, we start with table one. And then we have table two. So we have a many-to-many -many relationship between these two tables. There is this hidden table where this relationship is kept. So let's use an example of how this would work then. Let's say table one is the team's table and table two is a locations table. Now you're going to have many teams to many locations and many locations to many teams. So one team could have many locations and one location could have many teams. Well, the relate function then would essentially establish a relationship between the two in this hidden table. So rather than patch where you would go from table one, doing a lookup to table two, you are doing a relationship saying, okay, this first table go to this hidden table and this second table go to this hidden table and make a connection between them. And it essentially adds rows. It adds records in this hidden table to maintain that relationship. Therefore, when we use relate, we create a record in a multiple many-to-many uh, -many relationship table that's established when you create a many-to-many -many relationship in a hidden table that you don't actually see. And again, unrelate then would just reverse this. What it would do is it would look in that hidden table and it will find the record between table one and table two and then remove it. It would remove that relationship. So to simply patch data with Power Apps for many-to-many -many relationships, you can use the relate and unrelate. 
Okay, so before we move on to our actual demo, let's actually look at what else we need to do. Well, firstly, we need to look at enabling features. Now, why do we need to do this? Because straight out of the box, Power Apps does not work with one-to-many or many-to-many -many relationships. You have to go into settings, click on upcoming features, and click on experimental. Now, while it is an experimental feature, this is the only way you're going to be able to work with many-to-many -many relationships. So, once you're in experimental, you go down to the record scope one-to-many and many-to-many -many relationships and turn that on. Once you do this, you'll be able to then uh, submit and display many-to-many -many relationship data. If you do not do this, you will not be able to work with many-to-many -many relationship data. Okay, so I'm going to jump over to Power Apps right now and I'm going to go through how we turn on the feature and then go through an application that I've previously created to show you how all this works. Okay, so we are on Power Apps and what we have here then is just a um, application I've thrown together that essentially has a gallery of teams once you select one of those teams, it just goes into the selected team section. So as you can see here, I've got alpha team and uh, beta team and Charlie team, um, as well as I've got another gallery here with a different table called locations. And I've just got locations of all the provinces of Canada. So what you can then do then is you can select a team. It will display the information and then you can go through and select the locations that that team will be able to work on and hit submit. What will then happen is at the bottom, you'll be able to see um, what uh, locations are associated to that particular team. Essentially, we are doing a many to many relationship submission and um, we can then display the data to the user. But before we do that, we was talking about enabling a feature. So if we go into file, click settings, and then click on upcoming features, click on experimental, and then what you're gonna to want to do is scroll down quite a way and you'll see record scope uh, one to many and just make sure that's turned on uh, before you start and then just close that and you will then be able to work with many to many relationships. And you can see here, I've got a warning um, saying that this is being referenced and if you do use a large number of calls, it's going to impact your performance. Okay, so how does this work then? Well, firstly, I'm just listing my teams in my gallery. And obviously when I'm selecting a um, team, it's then just going into this gallery and essentially uh, displaying some information that I've just created. Uh, it's just the team name, uh, the type of team it is. So this is a resourcing team and how they're uh, being able to be contacted such as email, phone and Microsoft Teams. We then have the locations gallery. And again, this is just displaying locations, but it's got a checkbox. So a user can then go through, select certain um, locations, the so provinces in Canada, such as Alpha Team, if they were to then work in British Columbia, they could select that, hit submit. And then this submit button is what is doing all of the work of the relating and unrelating. Now let's open up this and see what happens then. So I'm going for, uh, for a for all loop and I'm cycling through the location gallery. So for every item in here, I'm going to check it and then I'm going to do something. So I'm going to go through all of the locations. I'm going to then see if the checkbox value is true. If the checkbox value is true, I'm going to use the relate function. I'm then going to do um, this record.teams because that is the relationship. If we go into um, our section here and we then go into relationships, um, we can then see the relationships that have been created. Now you can see we've got location and team. It's a many to many relationship. And this is the in-between um, table that we was talking about. This is the table that you don't see. So what we're doing essentially is going, okay, we are going through locations.team. So we're hitting that 
um, we're hitting that uh, relationship. So we're saying, okay, we are taking our location and the teams. This is the relationship table for the table we want to do. And we are establishing the record of the item that was selected. So for in this instance, we're going to, we would go British Columbia and Alpha Team. We would relate that record. And then in that third uh, table, the middle table where the relationships are held, a record would be created and stored. But if it's unchecked, then we're going to unrelate it. So if there is already a relationship between Alpha Team and British Columbia, and I don't tick this box, then it will remove the relationship. Okay, so pretty complicated. But essentially all we're doing is cycling for a gallery. We're checking to see if there is a uh, box been ticked in each record. If there is, we are using the relate function to relate the team and the location. If it's not ticked, then we are going to unrelate the team and the location. Then we just refresh the data sets. So we've got three galleries, one to display teams, one to display the selected team, one to display the, um, the locations, and then a submit button to cycle through the locations and relate it to a team or unrelated to a team, depending on if a selection has been made. Awesome. So let's say we do that. How do we then display the information um, of the relationships between the location and the teams if we do not see that third table? Well, as you can see here, I've just got a gallery of teams. So this is just listing all of the teams that are in here and I've just got the team name. But what we can do then is we can concat the locations. So it's teams.locations, so it's the relationship. We can then target the name uh, column so we can get the name of each of these. So let's go into uh, tables and we'll look for locations. And so what we would be going is we'll be going teams dot location. So then we have access to this table and then we pass in the name. So then we have access to that column. So then we have access to all of this information. So if there is a relationship between this item, so alpha team and a location, we will then be able to display it. But because it would come back as a many, um, like there'll be a many relationships or possibility of many relationships, we need to be able to concat that. Now what that means then is we need to be able to concatenate, we need to be able to take each one of those results and bring them back as one because the only other way we would be able to display this then is in another gallery. So a good way of doing this is using the concat feature using the items such as this record dot locations, so al this alpha team dot locations and then passing through the name of the columns, which in this instance is name. And then I'm using a separator of a comma and a space so that we have each um, location uh, separated by a comma and a space to make it displayable to the user. Sounds very complicated, but I assure you, all we're doing is essentially we're taking a list of items and putting a comma at the end and displaying it to the user. Alternatively, if you did not want to do this, you could then add another gallery and do the selected item dot locations and list all of those locations. If you didn't want to add another gallery, then this is the best way to do it. Okay, so let's take this for a spin then. We've got our application, we've selected Alpha Team. I'm going to assign Alpha Team to British Columbia and Alberta. So we are West Coast for Alpha Team and hit submit. What that's going to do then is it's going to make those records in that uh, third table and then refresh the data set. And as you can see here, Alpha Team is now assigned to British Columbia and Alberta. Now, as I mentioned before, because I've not got these ticked, um, it will do unrelated. So if I hit submit again, it will remove those relationships and as you can see alpha team is no longer assigned 
So what happens if we then do that again? Uh, we create those relationships again. And then this time I'm going to leave Alberta ticked. What we're expecting then is just British Columbia to be removed and we have Alberta assigned. So that's how you can work with many to many relationships on Power Apps. Although we are not technically using the patch function, we are actually patching data. We are using the relate and unrelate to do so into a third table and we're creating records which we can then bring back and display to the user easily. Thanks for watching another video by me, Flo Joe. If you like the video, don't forget to hit that